I just want the world to know that I had to get a full video done in just two days. If I stop making appearances, it's because I've died from finger cramps or I've run away to join the circus, as I am the biggest clown. Howdy, how's it going? My name's Davy Chappie, and today it's time to review the newest Unearthed Arcana, because apparently that's a thing that they're still doing. Yes, it seems the gods of coming up with ideas have finally awoken from their three-month-long slumber to grant upon us the newest in a long line of traditionally divisive articles, and this month is all about the Monk and the Barbarian. These classes that share an interest in both punching people in the face and doing it while shirtless have both been given new playtest material in the form of new subclasses. So there's no time to waste, let's dive into the crunch. The new Barbarian subclass is called the Path of the Wild Soul, and it asks the question of what if Tinkerbell took steroids and never skipped a single leg day? The answer is a magically inclined Barbarian with strong connections to the Feywild, taking the already most annoying to deal with class and making it Fey, so now it's the worst thing ever. It does get some really cool powers though. The Wild Soul Barbarian can detect magic and then glow a random color based on the school of magic that they detected. It can force damage onto anyone who makes it to a saving throw. It can roll a d4 and give people back that level of spell slot. Or barring that, it'll heal them, both of which deal a lot of not insignificant damage to the Barbarian in return. And finally, the most important and absolutely most ridiculous ability that they can actually get right at the start, but I had to save for last because it was so complicated to talk about, whenever the Wild Soul Barbarian rages, it gets its own unique Wild Surge table to roll on. That's right, you heard me. Move out of the way, Sorcerer, because there is a new schizophrenic subclass in town. Every time you rage, you roll a d8 and add an additional benefit, and it's always a benefit, there are no neutral or negative effects for this Wild Surge, to the Barbarian, either right at the beginning of, or for the full duration of the rage. These effects are, in order, dealing necrotic damage in an area and then healing the sum, teleporting as a bonus action, shooting flump bombs in random directions, raising your AC and dealing automatic damage to whoever does hit you, growing difficult terrain 10 feet around you, giving disadvantage on enemies around you, turning your weapons into a throwable light weapon that comes right back at you, or just plain flashing people to blind and deal radiant damage everywhere. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I think that this class is crazy interesting. It has some really neat mechanics that I haven't really seen before, or have only seen once, and so I like it both due to the randomness of it, but also because the randomness literally literally never does anything bad to you, which is fine because barbarians can only rage twice and their wild magic sticks with them for the whole duration, so getting a negative tacked onto that would sort of suck. My only suggestion is that the AC bonus that also does damage is a little too crazy. I'm not sure who looked at the barbarian and said, yeah, this needs more obnoxiously in your face fighting, but as a DM, I don't want to imagine a world where the barbarian doesn't even have to use a reaction to hurt me. It's just too much. Now, moving on to the second subclass in this playtest, the monk gets a new archetype in the form of the way of the astral self, which really harkens back to its anime roots by giving you your own unique Susano. So the gimmick with this subclass is that you, as a monk, have an astral form which manifests flavor-wise as whatever you really want, as it's meant to be a pure manifestation of your truest personality. So it could be a suit of armor, a more perfect version of you, a mannequin, a real girl real doll, or any other enemy stand that you can rationalize. In mechanical terms, the astral self monk gradually summons individual parts of the astral form piece by piece, starting with the arms, which let you use wisdom in place of strength checks and saving throws. They also give you extra attacks as you level, and they themselves are necrotic or radiant weapons, your choice, that attack with wisdom instead of strength or dex, giving you absolutely no reason to not max out wisdom and abandon all other scores except for maybe dex. After the arms, you get the head of your spiritual body glove, which gives you advantage on perception and intimidation checks, and lets you see in the darkness, both magical and non-magical, for up to 120 feet, because fuck you, warlock, you aren't special anymore, and the astral path needs literally all the toys. Later, when the arms and head are used in tandem to form a sort of upper body, you can deflect elements like they were arrows to a normal monk, your arms deal increased damage, and when you talk, you can designate either one person and share secrets exclusively to them so that you can talk mad smack about the other members of the team, or when your shit talking's found out, you can boom your voice so that people up to 600 feet away can hear you complain about getting caught. Finally, when you reach the sexy level of sexy level 17, your Mangekyo Sharingan unlocks and your ultimate weeb power comes forth, summoning the perfect Susano, I mean the complete astral self! Your visage surrounds you like a suit of armor and it gives you a bonus to AC, another another attack, and the absolutely ridiculous ability to regain key points equal to your wisdom mod, so five, because what else are you doing with your ABIs, whenever an enemy has the gall to get knocked out within 10 feet of you, which is absolutely balls floppingly insane, because it means that you will never, ever, ever, ever run out of key, especially since even though you have to spend a ludicrous 10 key just to get the armor on in the first place, it lasts for 10 minutes, and if you put it on right after a fight, that's literally two enemies and you've just made your points back, plus more when you beat the next guy up. I look at the astral path, and while I think that it is really, really cool as a concept, my mind is already racing with the different ways that I could flavor my otherwise completely unmodifiable spiritual form. Come on, wizards, give us some options here. But the thing is just ludicrous with its viability in the field. By level 11, you're hitting at least three times per turn, and one of those punches essentially does crit damage, so you're really just getting a flurry of blows each turn unless you actually decide to use flurry of blows, in which case that's another attack added on. The final form is laughably overpowered due to the key guzzling that I mentioned earlier, but also because now you're just adding another free attack 100% of the time with your juiced up spooky hands to caress my body with, and the fact that all of the abilities care about nothing but wisdom is just silly. I can't believe that I have to say this about the monk, but this subclass needs a bit more 
more of a reason to care about the other ability scores. But hey, this is just playtest material, and I'd much rather say that a thing is overpowered and that they should just scale it down than have to say that the thing is underpowered and they have to go right back to the drawing board. Overall, these classes are fantastic to look at, and I can't wait to see them in an official book. But that'll about do it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a like, comment, subscribe, ring the bell, join my Discord, join my Patreon so that I can afford the astral form with spinning rims, and if you get so angry that fairy magic starts shooting out of your nostrils, maybe it's time to see a doctor. But yeah, Davy out.